This is a photograph of Charles Maitland Humber, my father. My father uh, left this world in 1988, and he was a very interesting man. I had uh, great and have great affection for him. Uh, he was a man that had five degrees, Columbia, Boston University, Toronto University, McMaster University, and Harvard University. I was five years old when I attended my father's graduation for a degree at Harvard. It was 1947. It was the time that uh, George Marshall presented the Marshall Plan. I didn't know what was going on, I'm sure. My father also was a collector. Some of you have been recipients of little gold pieces that I've given you, 23 karat gold, and he used to have that. Um, some of the ties that I've sold for Stowe uh, were ties that belonged to my father many years ago. But my father also was a collector of coins. A couple of years ago, I was going through his, my mother still lives with us. My dad and mother together came and lived with us starting in 1981. And uh, I was going through some of my father's papers in the summertime. I think it may have been 1999, many years after he had passed. And I came across this th item. This is a picture of what I came across, a coin in his collection. I don't ever remember my father ever talking to me about that coin. And it had uh, the name Gotarsis on it, 40 to 51 AD. And it had the word Parthia. And somehow that uh, word uh, clicked with me, I, I, I seem to know where I had heard about it. Um, here's an enlargement of the coin. That's Gatarsis. And my guess is that not too many in the room know anything or very little about that man. He was uh, a Parthian king a nation that has come and gone, and many of us don't even know, where was Parthia? Well, Parthia is roughly equivalent to uh, Persia, or today the northern part, part of Iran. And uh, the Parthians were famous for archery. You've heard of the phrase, perhaps, that was a Parthian shot. And on the other side of this coin, there is a uh, picture of an archer. You can see the bow. <clears throat> what, if anything, does this have anything to do with my life, your life, anyone's life? Why, why not just throw it away? What? What good is this? It's a touch of the past. Um, well, it connects with me because it connects with the Christian faith. You'll notice that there's some writing on this coin. And uh, we want to talk about that writing shortly. But it connects with the Christian faith in this way. In the book of Acts, we read in the second chapter, now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? How then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, 
Elamites and so on. It goes on and lists other countries. But that's where I'd heard the phrase Parthians. And uh, Peter was speaking around 30 or 33 AD, whenever. And Gotarsis was king between 40 and 51, just about uh, 11 or 12 years later. Is it conceivable that some of my Christian brothers and sisters living in Jerusalem and listening to the apostle Peter went back to Parthia and actually held in their hand the very coin that my dad had in this dusty drawer. It's been around for a long time. It's a Parthian coin. That's an interesting connection. It created interest for me, but there's more to it than that. You'll notice that there is writing on this coin. Now let me help you out with the Greek here. This is the script Greek for Basilus Basalone. This is Basilus Basalone in capital letters. Here is beta, alpha, sigma, iota, lambda, epsilon, omega, sigma. And then on the next, next line, beta, alpha, sigma, iota, lambda, epsilon, omega, nu, or nu. Basilus Basalon, what does that mean? <coughs> it means king of kings. Maybe you didn't know that Gotarsis was the king of kings. Of course, we don't believe that, but that's what that coin was saying, that that leader was the king of kings. And that's interesting from a number of other perspectives, because when you look in the Old Testament, to the book of Daniel, for example, you'll see that Daniel has sent himself, as he addresses Nebuchadnezzar, addresses Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, which is like today, Iraq. And he addresses Nebuchadnezzar as king of kings, Basilus Basalom. And then in the book of Ezra, Artaxerxes in Persia, which is like today's uh, Iran, he's addressed as king of kings. So it's interesting to have hold in your hand a little connection with a certain amount of history. Here's a coin that has the very phrase that is mentioned in the Bible on more than one occasion. Jesus himself is referred to as the King of Kings. If you're familiar with Handel's Messiah and the Hallelujah Chorus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, a biblical phrase. But this leads now to the second coin that I want to talk about. And you say, what is that? That's what I wondered when I came across it in my dad's collection. This apparently is a Greek galley. I did some work uh, on the internet just yesterday. Maybe the date's on this, I'm not sure. But uh, you'll see that there are these, this looks like the body of the boat, or maybe oars. And you can definitely see three lines going across here. This looks like it could be the curved front, maybe similar to this. And maybe there's a slight curvature here going up. And uh, you say, where is this one from? This is from Judea, what is modern Israel today. And you say, well, let's see what the other side says. And I've got a blow up of this. And you can see some similarity with this coin over here. 
This is a Greek letter N. You can see it here. This is the mathematical theta. Some of it's missing. You can see part of the cross line there. There's your theta. This doesn't look too much like an epsilon. This is an epsilon. But I uh, wrote away to some authorities about this coin. And I, this was back in 99. And the word was that it definitely is a variant of the Judean coin. I was asking about these letters. And you would say, perhaps, what, what does that mean? And how does it relate to that other coin, Basilus Basilone? Well, this uh, word here is an abbreviation for ethnarch. You say, what is an ethnarch? Well, it's a diminished uh, title. It's, it's not the title of king. Uh, we know that Herod the Great, who is sometimes referred to as King Herod, had three sons, or more than three sons, but three that survived. Archelaus, Antipas, and Philip. And it says here that uh, Augustus Caesar did not allow the title of king to go to Herod's son, Archelaus, and he replaced it with the title, the lesser title, Ethnarch. So that coin from Judea is referring to Archelaus as an ethnarch. We read about Archelaus in the Bible. There's the Epsilon Theta Nu ethnarch case, ethnarch case for ethnarch. In Matthew, but when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, referring to Joseph. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, talking about Joseph and Mary and their baby Jesus. We also read in Matthew chapter 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, that's Archelaus's dad, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who would be born King of the Jews? In the same verse, King Herod referring to the King of the Jews. We have seen the star and so on. When King Herod heard this, was, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. There's a certain tension building about Herod. And would Herod's son be the king, or was there a new king? Many years later, on the Mount of Olives, We read these words, Luke chapter 19. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, and the reason that phrase is significant is because this card was attached to the coin that uh, my father had left, bronze coin of Herod Archelaus, 4 BC to 6 C, uh, Christian era, found on Mount of Olives. When Jesus came down the road, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices with all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Again, tension. The Pharisees said to Jesus,
Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. This issue of king is sort of a common theme. And the response was, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This coin that was found on the Mount of Olives would have presumably been there when Jesus spoke those words. Archelaus reigned between 4 BC and 6 AD. Jesus is speaking around 30 AD. It's possible that the coin that was in my father's collection was there on the Mount of Olives when Jesus spoke those words. And this coin, which I have in my pocket here, and I'm happy to show both of these coins to you. I'm going to let you see the actual coin as I jingle it on the surface of this overhead. It's not worth an awful lot, probably, in terms of monetary worth. But this coin does resemble a pebble, a stone. And the message on the coin is, King Herod's son, Archelaus, is not the king, the magi. The silent message is, and the history, if you know it, is that there is a person that the crowds were declaring to be king, and it was Jesus. These words are from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of John was written by John, and he wrote in the book of Revelation, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself, and he is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads out the wine press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I am happy to show anyone that comes up to me 